coming up on Focal Point. This app and these arms help disabled people do simple tasks we tend to take for granted. I'm Michael Epps and I'll show you how these local businesses are back and ready for business. And a rally at the Capitol to support sexual assault survivors and the Yes Means Yes Affirmative Consent Bill. Focal Point starts now. Good evening, I'm Tatiana Hemphill. And I'm Treasure Roberts. Two Michigan Senators hosted a big day at the state capitol on Thursday. Curtis Hertel and Tanya Schudemaker called it Survivor and Empowerment Day. Dozens rallied inside and outside the capitol building, showing support for sexual assault survivors and promoting the Yes Means Yes Bill, a bill that will teach students how to get affirmative consent before sexual act activity. Rachel Tomashow was the first MSU graduate student to file a complaint against Dr. Larry Nasser. She told the crowd it's important to be brave and stand behind victims of assault. It was really exciting to have some faces that I've recognized from a whole life. Um, I'm just really grateful that they're here supporting me and supporting other survivors. From the steps of the Capitol to right here on campus, the Me Too movement has taken over. Caitlin DeLuca joins us in the Spartan Newsroom with more on MSU Me Too. Yes, Treasure, the question is, will Me Too MSU still be at the front of all of our minds come summer? Sign the rocks. Classes are ending. Good luck on finals. The message Sign is the not. The Teal has replaced green on campus, at least here at a Michigan State landmark to support survivors and promote change. We want to raise money where we can, but at the same time, we know money's not going to help the whole cause. Armed with shirts, Sharpies, and a dog, Austin Pabian and his group called Me Too MSU painted the rock with a new slogan, No More. The national organization No More reached out to me, and that's why we have the No More on our shirts, and they wanted to help us get the word out as well because they don't have a Michigan chapter. With the rock freshly painted, students made their mark. Andrew Hellam is here like many to sign the rock in support of this No More Me Too movement. I'm putting my name on the rock for that. But now the new focus, how to keep the movement alive when students leave for the summer. And we're here today to say, hey, we know it's finals, hey, we know we're leaving, but this is not going un untalked about. I mean, it's just, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of persistence but I mean over the summer it's all we have to do is keep in contact keep telling people and just not let anybody forget what's going on. It's important to the Me Too movement to stay in the front of everyone's mind. Much like the goals of another group, Dominic's Warriors marched at the Capitol on Thursday to help end child abuse. The group is named after a four-year-old boy who died after being abused by his mother's boyfriend. That man is now locked up for life. Several survivors were there marching, including a five-year-old boy named Wyatt. His mom was there to petition a law named after Wyatt to prevent other children from losing their ability to live a normal life. I think we just really need to protect our most innocent and vulnerable members of society, um, and this is a tool to do it. Wyatt's mother says child abuse cases have increased every year for the past three years. In Michigan, not just anybody can become a mechanic or a cosmetologist. You need licenses and certificates to operate, but not all licenses are created equal. Between hairstylists and car mechanics, one has to pay more than $20,000 in fees and train 1,500 hours. The other requires a $25 test, and can you guess which is which? Focal Point's Chloe Keipel has that answer. We trust them with our lives. Yeah, and I'm just giving it like the loose beachy waves a little bit. Or at least our hair. I have learned a lot of cuts. You wouldn't want just anyone touching your hair. Absolutely, that's like your statement piece to like you personally. It's not like just your clothes, but like your hair. And you definitely wouldn't want just anyone touching, say, your car. In Michigan, cosmetologists and mechanics need licenses to operate and they need to pass certification tests. One of them requires thousands of hours of training, a skills demo, and a written test, while the other is just one online exam. But can you guess which is which? Yeah, yeah so we're here all to get our 1,500 hours before we can take that test. These are cosmetology students at the Douglas J. Aveda Institute in East Lansing. I love it. It's nice keeping busy and working with my hands. Who pay more than $20,000 for almost a year of mandatory training. So we practice like the haircut that's required for our licensing exam. 
Interestingly, Michigan licensing laws do not require car mechanics to go through any kind of schooling. Um, if you feel that you have the knowledge to do it and the experience to do it, anyone could go down and actually take the test. Just get a 65% on the test and you're legally a mechanic. A uh, piece of paper says you can, but that doesn't mean you actually can. A bad haircut will eventually grow out, but a bad repair job could be dangerous. Sometimes you have to go through bad experiences to get good ones. That's why it's important to do your homework. You read enough reviews of the places that you're working with, you can generally get a, a general gist of who you're working with. In East Lansing, Chloe Keipel, Focal Point News. Ladies, I'm talking to you right now. Admit it, you've looked at the how-to videos on YouTube about using straws to curl your hair. Well, you may need to find a new curling iron instead of straws. Focal Point's Deja Green has more. Yeah, and one of these bales, I could say probably upwards of 100 of them. So there's a lot of straws. I mean, they're small, they're thin. Plastic uh, straws. With the plants as big as this, we go through a lot. They're everywhere, and there's talk of getting rid of them. I would say it's a good first step. But it's hard to imagine life without them. But a lot of plastic doesn't even make it to the recycling center. Ops manager Sean Barton says more straws equal more plastic pollution. It ends up on the side of the road or in the landfill. And with plastics, we don't necessarily know how long they take to break down. Causing a real mess. But they're designed for single use. But that one single use might be important to people who live in retirement communities such as Bertram Hills. Especially when it comes to patient care. Plastic cups. And then some people, like, they need the straw to drink the, the shake out of the cup. Steps are being made. Now, they are making strides with some compostable items and some hybrid plastics made out of corn and stuff like that, which is a little bit better that's not using fossil fuels. However, it's still an impact to the environment. So will this be the last straw? <laughs> For plastic straws? Any slanting? Deja Green, Focal Point News. MSU Recycling has now started a plastics-only route to sort plastics more effectively. Drive through downtown Okemos and you wonder if you've missed it. The empty storefronts may be a thing of the past soon. Um, I'm very sad the store <laughs> bottoms up is going belly up. Sherry Fisher has been on this corner in downtown Okemos for 40 years, but not for much longer. But it was just hard, a hard decision to leave our lovely customers, but after working a lot of hours all those years, it's time for a new adventure. After her own dance career, she's fitted students in tights and ballet slippers ever since. <laughs> we have always listened and taken care of what each studio has to have and made it a point to remember so they go home with what's required for their particular studio or acting group. Bottoms Up is really the last business open at that intersection but change is coming. I mean, Meridian Township has so many great things going for it, but these three areas are just underperforming by our standards. Chris Buck awaits the board meeting May 1st to officially get the new developments approved. Business districts and office space and residential uh, that have all kind of eroded over the last decade to the point where they're really almost an embarrassment to our community. This is what he means. A bakery opened up here and she's already gone. She came from East Lansing, so she wanted to come back to her roots and expand. And now people have to wait for the renovation in Okemos or drive to East Lansing for a mitten raise donut. How do we go up? And to lose mitten raise. I know they found a new home just outside of our township limits, but I'm very grateful that Katie landed on her feet and I love her new space and I wish her all the best. If the Township Board approves the developmental ideas, there could be a new place to hang out downtown Okemos. The Township Board will vote on that decision next Tuesday, May 1st. Coming up after the break, we bring you up to speed on the effects flooding has had in East Lansing. Plus, students find unique ways to showcase their creativity. Stay tuned after the break. There are moments of triumph, of discovery, and achievement. But what makes these moments possible? It's the early mornings, the late nights. It's having the will to persevere. So let's take a moment to celebrate. But more importantly, let's salute the will it takes to get there. Spartan's will. Welcome back. Weeks ago, we brought you a report on the record-breaking flooding seen on Michigan State's campus. As Focal Point's Michael Epps shows us, the flooding spread far beyond MSU. 
They say when it rains, a little water never hurts. The whole thing looked like a lake through here. But tell that to businesses on the banks of the Red Cedar. Man, it was real surprising you couldn't drive through here. It was real flooded. Last month's flooding on the Red Cedar River did more than just break records. Well, we're surprised about the flooding, but depressed that the restaurant wasn't open. It forced Green Dot Stables and Steakhouse Philly to close down for weeks. We always check to see when it's open so we can come back. Green Dot just had its grand opening this past December. We were hitting our stride, you know, um, starting to be busier more frequently. But when the river's tide rose to Kalamazoo Street, the new restaurant was forced to shut down. Like the fire marshal came in and said that uh, we had to evacuate. It didn't really dawn on us that it was, uh, was going to be as severe as it was, you know. We kind of just figured, oh, it's going to be uh, you know, a couple inches maybe. But then inches rapidly turned to feet. The office was all flooded about three and a half feet. You know, the office has been all redone and stuff, which we did ourselves. Steve Spaulding owns the Ace Rug Cleaning Store next door. My father and grandfather started it, and I've been here about 30-some years running it. His business was not forced to shut down, but he still felt the flood's devastating effects. You know, everything in lower file cabinets was damaged, office furniture. I mean, when the water comes in, it's, it just moves everything, you know. Damage was done. Through weeks of hard work and thousands of dollars in repairs, the tide slowly turned. There's not too many times you get to open the same restaurant twice, so we evaluated what was working and what wasn't working and you know, made the changes that we thought would, would help us. Steakhouse Philly and Green Dot both officially opened today, and Green Dot will hold a special grand opening on May 5th for the Kentucky Derby. We're about to go into our first weekend after coming back. In Lansing, I'm Michael Epps, Focal Point News. Flooding also affected many campus buildings, and with that damage repaired, Focal Point's Gabriella Galloway tells how these buildings are now free to upgrade. The seeds are planted inside IM West. Brand new artificial turf is being rolled out. The first time this surface has been replaced in 46 years. Tennis, a lot of students doing soccer, lacrosse, cricket. IM Sports Director Joel Eddy says the old worn out artificial turf has become a safety hazard. The surface is very thin, wearing thin in spots, was a tripping hazard. Changes aren't only coming to the floor, but to the rafters too. Improved ventilation system in that turf arena. From I am west to I am east, renovations aren't stopping in one building. Feels like you're running through a tunnel. The new indoor track is running on schedule. They're putting a new surface down, as well as tearing down that interior wall. And in a third building, time and renovation have stood still. Until now. Demonstration Hall was built in 1928. It's seen basketball games in the 30s, hockey games in the 40s, and now it's used by the MSU Marching Band and ROTC. Students deserve to be able to have spaces that they can go to that are updated, that are new and vibrant. And although improvements are coming, the most important aspect of these buildings will never change. Character. In East Lansing, Gabriella Galloway, Focal Point News. These renovations are a part of the Healthy, Healthy Campus Initiative Project that in total will cost $31 million. However, the IM fixes will cost just under $8 million. Did it look like some of the students on campus were younger than normal? There was a reason. It was Take Your Child to Work Day. Kelly Sheridan joins us from the Spartan Newsroom with more. Kelly? Yes, Tatiana, not just here, but across the country, kids of all ages bothered their parents all day. The MSU Work Life Office hosted events at the Union for the 25th Annual Special Day. Faculty from across the university brought their little ones in for mock interviews, listened to guest speakers, and received certificates. They dove into some of their favorite interests all day, with a focus on what they will do when they grow up. I really would like to be a filmmaker who's able to travel around the world and um, like plot out places to film um, scenes and, yeah, and direct films. Samuel just might find a home here at Com Arts in a few years. Some parents might be able to take their kids to work, but for a student, that might be more difficult than fun. Focal Point's Treasure Roberts explains. I'm not a fan of exams. Students, finals, and graduation add up to stress. And on top of that, interdisciplinary studies major Brittany Slater just found out. I have like 10 people and I only got three tickets. Not all of her family will be able to see her graduate because of a ticket shortage. It's been a long time coming. 
working on her degree for eight years. I've done all of this by myself, so I feel like the least they could do is be here for, to watch me cross the stage. But if no one else watches her cross the stage, she knows one person will. Good morning, Loki. Her two-year-old son, Logan. Can let mommy help you, okay? Let's brush your teeth. Brush, brush, brush. In 2016, her life changed forever. You can brush. Brush. School for him starts long before school for her. He goes to Sunshine Early Childhood Center. Well, have a good one. You I gotta go to work, so I'll, I'll be back to get him later. Okay, have Thanks. A good Thanks, you too. Then for Brittany. Time to go to work. I cannot get any more late. <laughs> so, I'm about to call. She isn't passionate about her job, but she has to work. And I literally have a picture of Logan sitting on my desk when I go to work to motivate me to not walk out because I legit want to walk out every shift. It's all about Logan. He gave me a purpose. I went through that stage of how am I going to do this with him when I barely could do it by myself. He even helped her through her you know, depression. He's the light of my life, literally. And when she walks across the stage, he'll be I'm right by her side. In East Lansing, I'm Treasure Roberts, Focal Love Point you Brittany is looking forward to getting the degree she worked so hard to get. She hopes to get her doctorate in the future and knows that with her biggest motivator, Logan, that goal is within reach. It has been a divisive semester following the Larry Nassar sentencing, and now many university groups are hosting cultural learning events to open up discussion forums. Today, the College of Communication, Arts and Sciences hosted an inclusivity seminar to help students and faculty appreciate diversity. Three ComArts Faculty Impact Award winners presented their teaching practices that embrace diversity in the classrooms. Professor Allison Eden spoke of the importance of meeting student needs. It's not that we're doing this because we're all like liberal snowflakes who want everything to be happy and magical and there's a moral imperative to do so, although that might be part of the reason. I think another reason is because this is, allows us to better meet our students' needs in a way that allows us to meet our course goals and objectives. Michigan State regularly hosts intercultural activities to build community. The events are free and will take place throughout the spring and summer. For a full list of events, visit inclusion.msu.edu. Budding fashion designers, listen up. You have the chance to sell your designs at a real store. The pop-up shop called 96 is open right now at Meridian Mall. It's the brainchild of Ashton Keys. He owns his own clothing line, appropriately named 96. He decided to give other entrepreneurs a chance to showcase their work. I wanted to give myself an opportunity to showcase my brand to the community along with other brands. So I have brands here from Lansing, from Michigan State, but also from the community in Detroit as well. The pop-up shop will close Sunday. With designing clothes to innovating ideas, Focal Point's Kendall Ashman talks about how engineering students showcase their semester-long work. All right, give me the score. 200, baby! It's not your typical day in the classroom. You reset it and pop more top. With a homework assignment on life. For engineering students, they work with a corporate partner in order to create a solution to a real-world problem. On issues we tend to take for granted. We don't know what it's like. But people with muscular dystrophy are reminded of every day. We were given by our partners, Urban Science and Talem, this exoskeletal arm. And given the task to help disabled people control their own limbs through. A solution was to put it onto a mobile app. Their iPhones. Saves time and money and makes their lives easier. Uh, what we have here is a just. And for this group, Herman Miller gave them $50,000 to save money on. On all the chairs, they put these little tags on them. Manuals. So these, they spend a million dollars on every year. Only for consumers to rip them off. So what we've done here is created an image recognition system to tell people what chair they're using. Okay. And then to... But not all projects relied on apps. Yep, we're running a rowing hand cycle here. Because hands were too busy steering. This was created for the MSU Adaptive Sports Club. Um, for handicapped people to use. Because they rely on their arms to exercise. After today, uh, we'll be dropping it off for them to use um, at their practices every Tuesday and Thursday for the rest of, the rest of the year. Certainly not your typical day for these engineering students. In East Lansing, Kendall Ashman, Focal Point News. The group Herman Miller came home with first place. On a campus known for being green, celebrating Arbor Day at MSU is a big deal. It took an entire crew to plant a 20-foot cherry tree in front of the Union today. And to celebrate Arbor Day, everyone who stopped by walked away with their very own Catalpa tree, courtesy of the MSU Department of Forestry. The Infrastructure, Planning, and Facilities Department was awarded the Tree Campus USA Award for dedication of tree preservation on campus. 
Here on campus, we have over 24,000 trees on the main campus that we have cataloged. And we're unfortunately losing more trees than we're planting. And so the sustainable, we want to, you know, at least break even. So we're working towards uh, planting more trees on campus. And good news, a few of the leaves have been sprouting up on some of those bare branches, which means summer has to be close. I'm Kelly Sheridan, and that's what's happening on campus. Thanks, Kelly. What do golfing, log rolling, and swimming have in common? They're all a part of MSU sports and recreational culture. Ryan Cole joins us now from the sports desk with a preview. Ryan? The MSU women's golf team has already had quite the season. Find out what they're up to after the break. What makes a Spartan a Spartan? The relentless drive to turn question marks into exclamation points. Believing that we are strong as one, but All extraordinary right. <clears throat> together. And it's our impact that matters most. What makes a Spartan is what's inside. The commitment to something bigger. Because the world never stops asking, who will? Spartans will. Welcome back to Focal Point. I'm Ryan Cole. The Michigan State women's golf team has built a dominant program under head coach Stacey Sabonik Stoll. The Hall of Fame coach won her sixth Big Ten championship last year, and her team is having another great season this year after competing in the Big Ten championship this past weekend. Spartans were one stroke off the lead heading into the final round Sunday, and their three best golfers were clutch when they needed to be. Sarah Burnham, Allison Jeer, and Katie Sharp combined for five birdies in the final two holes. That clinched the title for the 12th-ranked Spartans, their second straight conference championship and fifth in the last eight years. Slobodnik Stoll said she drew some inspiration from some pretty impressive Spartan legends. You know, I remember Ron Mason telling me this a long time ago to have a tradition of excellence and I remember Coach Izzo, he still tells me how hard it is to win championships and every single one we win I'm just, I'm so thankful and blessed that we have the opportunity to do that and that our players continually are good enough and, and are strong enough to do that. Yeah, it means a lot. Um, I can't really put it into words. Uh, to be back-to-back -back champions, I never imagined that. Um, yeah, I'm just so happy, really. It was announced on Wednesday that MSU will play in the Austin Regionals of the NCAA Tournament. They take on the University of Texas Golf Club in early May. Michigan State baseball and softball were both in action at home Friday afternoon. Baseball took on Maryland, looking to extend its five-game winning streak. Terrapins went up 1-0 early on an RBI single here from Taylor Wright. Throw to the plate from right field was not in time, 1-0 Terps. Wright then followed that with a steal to second base, throw from the catcher just too high. Spartans did fight back, though, with an RBI single from Danny Gleaves to tie it up at one in the bottom of the second. And then to the mound, Ethan Landon. He had a nice day for the Spartans. He's going to notch a strikeout right here, looking. Spartans gained the lead and held on to win 4-2 and improved to 16-21. and Now let's head over to Secchia Stadium, where MSU softball began a weekend series with Rutgers. Women's head golf coach Stacy Zlobonik stole throughout the first pitch. Christina Zalewski was the starter for MSU and she was lights out. That's one of her eight strikeouts there to end the top of the first inning. Now the third, Leah Forrester crushes this one to left center gap, slides into second base safely for one of her two doubles on the day. MSU went on to also win 4-2. First pitch for tomorrow's game set for 1 p.m. Women's swim and dive has excelled under head coach Matt Giadonis and associate head coach Kathleen Malloy. Focal Point's Angel Thompson takes a closer look at the program's accomplishments this past season. With Michigan State being primarily known as a basketball and football school, sometimes other sports slip under the radar. So I think it's definitely not an individual sport. You always need someone there cheering you on. But three women of the women's swimming and diving team broke school records this season. Erin Zara is a freshman who broke the freshman breaststroke record this year. I hit like the next fastest time I can hit, so those two... Um, team records were to the goals I had and breaking them was like I was so happy afterwards and but she said she couldn't have done it without her teammates especially her swimming partner Anna Sortland. Anna has broken records of her own and hopes to pass the torch to Erin and um, just cheer her on you know I mean it's so easy when she's I mean she's like a great girl so it's so fun just to be able to cheer each other on she helped me get better I helped her get better and I think you just kind of feed off of that energy associate head coach Kathleen Malloy is just proud of her team and was really excited to see the girls break these records I mean they did an awesome job and it's kind of cool having a bunch of breaststrokers who could train together 
Ellie Roach broke the 200 breaststroke record this season. Ellie is probably the one who's the best at the over distance training longer and I am. So she really, the three of them got to work together. So it was, it was a good working relationship. Um, being able to break the record this year, it came from a couple of years of just really hard work. But um, I think the main thing was I had I had great coaches that were leading me there and also my teammates. I have a lot of fun training with them. Anna and Ellie will be seniors next season, so their goals are to have fun and keep the momentum going. As for Erin, she has dreams of being in the 2020 Olympics. In East Lansing, I'm Angel Thompson, Focal Point News. And while you might be used to pools being used for swimming and diving, log rolling is the newest thing on campus to make a splash. MSU Intramural hosted a log rolling tournament this week at I Am Circle. Eight players competed one-on-one -on -one until a champion was crowned. In a best-of-five series, each player started on the log and tested their balancing ability to see who could stay on longer. Students in attendance hope more events like this will happen on campus. I love it. I mean, I've always done like, the traditional sports, like soccer, um, which is always really fun, but like this is so different and it's, it's cool. I like it. And this is the first time Intramural has done a log rolling event and Assistant Director Ross Winters says the main goal is for people to enjoy themselves. So keep an eye out for more events like this next semester. And that's what's happening in sports. I'm Ryan Cole. Thanks, Ryan. Bittersweet goodbyes are in order for some Spartan graduates. Ryan says a select group of MSU students get to serve as tour guides for future Spartans. But those days don't last forever. For nearly 50,000 students, Michigan State University is home. We tour about 50,000 people a year around campus. But who would buy a home without taking a peek first? One of the best jobs you can have on campus. Being a campus tour guide. So I spend a large amount of time here. We have about 120 tour guides. But the job doesn't last forever. Two and a half years. For senior guides like Liam Kirkbride. Their very last tour, they get to wear their cap and gown. It comes to an end in a special way. It's super fun. I'm so glad we're doing this. This is a, a tradition that's been going on th with the program ever since it was created. So this is like the moment that I've kind of been waiting for. This is, uh, uh, it's all been kind of leading to this. Kirk Bride was joined by two other senior guides on their last tour. All right, folks, so right now we're standing in the main library, so I'm going to try and uh, keep my voice down a little bit. But this is actually my first time uh, inside here before. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. For Liam, it's hard to imagine leaving this home. It still hasn't hit me that I'm even graduating. It wasn't just a job, you know, it was it was a professional development opportunity for me. And he's really going to miss being here. Honestly, I do it for free. I, I absolutely love being a tour guide, being able to interact with prospective students. I'm sure all my other tour guides would, would say, say the, the same. same thing. So after one last photo with a campus icon, it's time to say farewell. In East Lansing, Ryan Cole, Focal Point News. Michigan State's tour guides walk with groups of prospective juniors and seniors, middle school field trips, and even alumni groups. On a night when students would rather curl up in a pair of long johns, another long john waited for them at the library. It's called the Night of a Thousand Donuts. Students stood in line for chocolate raised glaze, strawberry, sprinkled top cake, and apple fritters, plus a cup of joe. Some think this is just the event to attract more students to the library. The next final Survivals Week event is Photo Booth Night, scheduled for this upcoming Sunday. With just one week till graduation, students are getting their cap and gowns and putting the Spartan Spirit Shop to work. Located in the MSU Union, the Spartan Spirit Shop is the top seller for caps and gowns come graduation season. The gowns are categorized by your height with 21 different tassel colors, depending on your college or major. The shop is responsible for 85% of cap and gown sales and sell roughly 7,000 gowns per year. But for students, the buying of a cap and gown is bittersweet and the final step on a long road. The last couple weeks have been overwhelming, exciting, um, nerve-wracking, but ultimately like um, a real blessing, I guess, in a lot of ways. So. If you haven't gotten your cap and gown yet, don't worry. The Spartan Spirit Shop will be open until graduation. Finals are coming up, and it's a stressful time. Focal Point's Angel Thompson tells us how students are relieving stress. I was kind of stressed about finals coming up. We all deal with stress differently. I just said, hey, why not go and study out there? It's a tough week for college students. Finals week. The library can be stressful, too, but not now. They make a tremendous difference. 
thanks to Ella and her human, Irma. Finals, and then you guys are done? Ella can put a smile on faces in the middle of studying for that final. <laughs> I tried a raincoat, but it didn't quite work. Life as a music major is like really stressful. I have a dog at home and he like really calms me down. If only for a few minutes. Ella is a therapy dog here for one reason. But she likes making you guys feel better. Irma and Ella have visited Michigan State 34 times and Irma says Ella is always waiting by the door when she knows she is about to go do a job. Her name's Cinderella, but I call her Ella. Sophomore Brianna Monahan knows how much a canine companion can help. In fact, she brought her own. De-stresses them. Um, you know, I've had him around on campus all week, and I've had so many people, like, stop and pet him, and they just go, oh, thank you so much. I really need it this right now. Scout is Brianna's service dog, who couldn't stay away from this afternoon of stress relief. They're so innocent and um, full of life and happiness that it just kind of brings a little bit of that to everyone else, and that's why I think they're so important, especially on college campuses during this stressful time. In East Lansing, I'm Angel Thompson, Focal Point News. Oh, they are so cute. The therapy dogs will be in the library again on Monday from 1 to 3 as final week kicks off. That's our show for this evening. I'm Treasure Roberts. And I'm Tatiana Hemphill. Thanks for joining us and have a great weekend.